We'll start by just having a roll call and identification of the members of the work group. Go ahead, uh, Karen. Karen Shepard, uh, Osteopathic uh, Board of Licensure. Brent Earwood, I'm the representative from the Board of Nursing. Uh, Michael Zanoli, I chair this work group and I uh, represent the Board of Medical Examiners. Joan Gardner, physician assistant, and I represent the Committee of Physician Assistants. Rachel Powers, I'm the representative for the Board of Cosmetology. We just want to make sure the commerce reaches the level of safety and uh, is uh, uh, be able to raise the standards to where the, the safety is uh, across the board, uh, across nursing, uh, MDs, uh, PAs, DOs, and people who are licensed estheticians in the state of Tennessee. The very first thing it says, any person shall be regarded as practicing medicine within the meaning of this chapter who treats or professes to diagnose, treat, operates on, or prescribes for any physical ailment or any physical injury to or deformity of another. And I also have surgery uh, under Rule 8802-0213. O, the uh, alphabetical O, the uh, any uh, excision or resection, partial or complete destruction, incision or other structural alteration of human tissue by any means, including through the use of lasers performed on the body of a living human for purposes of preserving health, diagnosing, curing, uh, repairing, and, and it also says re, uh, for aesthetic, reconstructive, or cosmetic purposes. So we have already some things that we have to work within and the definition of medicine and surgery then include these type of other procedures. But all these things, injection of materials into uh, the skin, uh, either whether it be fillers or they be biologic agents, that uh, clearly uh, on definitions of the practice of medicine, that would be the practice of medicine. And... Uh, in fact, the use of uh, other agents or other energies to penetrate into the skin to cause a, a defect or to uh, cause a change, that also is uh, part of the definition for surgery in, uh, in our statutes also. We've got laws the that, that say what we're allowed to do. Yeah. If we're going to advertise, though, as a medical spa, we need to have medical personnel otherwise we're misrepresenting to the public well, and you're, and you're going in for a procedure thought. that you think is going to be provided by a physician and or a nurse uh, and you've got somebody who doesn't meet that criteria that that's something that's misrepresenting to the public we don't call ourselves a med spa but we do laser hair removal we do Botox and Juvederm injections um, Restylin um, my biggest concern is that there has not been legislation. I'm sorry to interrupt you right away, but so what do you call yourself? Laser Center. Okay, and uh, uh, so you don't call yourself a medical spa, and uh, are you a medical office? No, I have a physician as a business partner, though. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you so people could uh, make informed decisions. Right. We're not making rules tonight. And I'm, I'm the first to admit that there are people out there doing this that shouldn't be doing it. Well, I, I don't understand but how you can't think that uh, injecting Botox is not the practice of medicine. I, I, it is the practice of medicine. So uh, why don't you just, why isn't your place a uh, medical office? Why do I need to call myself a med spa? I think that's overstating things. Well, do you think you uh, are running a medical office? No. Okay. Uh, you made the statement that you have a well-trained personnel. Mm -hmm. Did you specify how they're trained? Is it on the job training, or do you, or do, do they put so many hours in and continuing? <laughs> education hours or well again because there, there's or? never been any regulation for this uh -huh. so um, we just set standards in place that we were comfortable with for example on a, a laser service um, we had the laser companies bring their trainers in and train our people who trained your uh, RN for the filler injections uh, the one we have was trained when we when we hired her so I, I don't know who trained her you said you had a physician that was a part owner mm-hmm is he on site frequently? 
Um, if you put that totally into the medical field, the hair removal laser business is just about going to be put out of business. You're not just pulling the plug on what we're doing in my facility, you're pulling a plug on laser companies because doctors and nurses are not going to stand and shoot hair removal lasers all day long and that is a massive industry in this country. And these people don't define themselves necessarily as we're a med spa. Now some of them do, but some of them like you all are just this is we're a center and we do these things. Right. And but with that's our your, but tasks, I don't know uh, we all agree with you. Right. Well, and we all agreed with you what you just said. I think that it's pretty clear that there's a wide range of things that occur there. But we some, right. think some that of most the, of us just think that they are a part of the practice of medicine. But some of the language you're discussing tonight, putting in, in written form, would prevent us from doing what we do right now. But at a medical spa, there are many procedures in this gradation, if not most, that are considered within the practice of medicine or the definition of surgery. Right now it's not regulated by any entity and that's why we're here. But are you comfortable with medical personnel being, if I'm a obstetrician and I'm the medical personnel on staff that day, then sure, you can do whatever with the laser as an obstetrician because that's medical personnel. Not and that's really where because under our licensure we can't. Uh, oh, you mentioned before, I think you're absolutely right. I totally agree that there are certain uh, specialties in the uh, field of medicine, whether you're MD or a DO, that uh, basically do not have as part of their basic training uh, surgical uh, techniques necessarily, and they don't get trained uh, in the use of lasers necessarily. And so certain specialties uh, might be... Uh, uh, more apt for supervision of those or use of those type of uh, procedures uh, than others. So th I think it even rises to the level of the postgraduate medical education training too about who should be able to use or supervise certain devices. Stephen Bengelsdorf, MD, asked uh, to address the panel. So I'll call Dr. Bengelsdorf first. Thank you. I'm a surgeon. I've been practicing cosmetic medicine and surgery for seven years in Franklin, Tennessee. I'd just like to make some comments and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, first of all, cosmetologists and estheticians by law are not allowed to work on living human tissue. Uh, hair, nails, those are dead tissue. The layer of skin that they can work on is limited to the upper epidermis and that all too is dead tissue. And this is actually Tennessee Board of Cosmetology rules. So. Invasive procedures that shall not be used include, but are not limited to, the following. Application of electricity, which contracts the muscle, and abrasion of the skin below the non-living epidermal layers. So both by statute and precedent, cosmetologists and estheticians have never, ever, ever worked on living human tissue. Second of all, with regards to advertising and medical, I do think it's deceptive and fraudulent. I, I very much appreciate and applaud your comments. If someone says medical, they're thinking that there is a medical person on the premises, okay? With regards to lasers, there are all different types of lasers. There are high energy lasers, there are low energy lasers, there are LED, you know, someone can call a laser pointer a laser. The truth is, is that if a laser has enough energy to cause an effect on human tissue, it can be good or bad, and it's a medical procedure. Again, I just want to reiterate that any procedure that has the ability to change human tissue has a potential for medical complications and need to be addressed by a physician or medical person. Um, with regards to patient safety, you started off saying that this is about safety. We care about the safety of people in the state of Tennessee. I agree completely, it's about safety. Medical offices treat patients. Spas and salons treat clients. In my mind, there's a huge difference in terms of professional responsibility, ethics, and obligations. And uh, finally, you can't make different rules with regards to vision supervision for aesthetics because we already have them in TCA. We already have the rules for supervision that a physician has to supervise a nurse practitioner or a PA. And they apply the same to whether that person's doing aesthetics or whether they're doing cardiothoracic surgery. So thank you very much for listening to my comments.